Mumbai, the biggest city in India. Endlessly rich in culture and in contradictions. It's home to one of the oldest and grandest hotels in the world, the Taj Mahal Palace. It's beyond just luxury. You know, this is this little mirage in the middle of this city. It has over 500 rooms and 1,500 staff. I never feel that I'm 61. I feel that I'm 16. Taj has built me very strongly. It's famed for being meticulous, where no detail is too small or demand too great. Anything that's possible. Why can I get you a pink elephant? I'll try. <laughs> With an army of staff striving for flawless service. This is India. I mean, we frankly don't say no to anything. It's where the super rich of today come to live like the Maharajas of India's past. Sometimes I close my eyes and I pretend that all of India is like this. Standing on the edge of the Arabian Sea, the Taj Mahal Palace Hotel has been a landmark in Mumbai for over a hundred years. Favoured by rock stars and royalty, billionaire businessmen and stars of Hollywood and Bollywood, it was the first luxury hotel in India. For the last five years, executive housekeeper Indrani has been keeping the hotel in a manner fit for kings. Uh, Deepthi, all the canopies, they have to be more stuck towards the ceiling because there are little, little wires showing on them, huh? And there's little that escapes her attention. Hi, boys, good morning. It has to be nicely vacuumed, okay? Harshit, put your hand inside. Once you're vacuumed, please put your hand inside the entire corners and see that everything is clean, okay? These are the blankets. These are the blankets which has already come after disinfection from the laundry. But since it is all touched by human beings, you can have a lint and I don't want anything over there. So sometimes eyes can default, so I'm checking with also with a torch if I missed out on anything. Okay, this is clean. Show me the other one. Okay, the At 9,000 pounds a night, the Tata suite is the most exclusive in the hotel. Named after the hotel's founder, the suite has 15 rooms, including its own private spa and gym. This is what I was talking about. Can you see that it is having little bubbles? All right, there should not be any bubbles. It's seen dignitaries and celebrities from Tom Cruise to Barack Obama pass through its doors. Which one have you done it already? This one. Huh? It's not clean. Can you be very, very careful huh, while you're doing it? Yes, ma'am. With the next guest and his entourage arriving in a few days' time, Indrani wants to check everything. All right, so I want complete uh, tight bunch of pink roses. They're coming to India for the first time, so ensure that we have a little Indian touch to it. This gives us a lot of excitement, and uh, we must have seen all the photographs of the people who have stayed here. And though I see that every day, but I don't hesitate. Every day when I look at it, I feel immense proud. Oh my God, I have been able to you know, do something for this guest who have done so much for the world. I'm looking at the finishing below the underbase. Why are you looking there? The finishing and the cleanliness under the basin because this is an area which is neglected. People generally feel lazy to sit down. So we ensure that when we are checking the room, we always sit down and look up. Because when the guest is lying in the bathtub, he's actually at this height. 
and he can see this. You can't see it, but guest can see this like this. So we have to ensure that everything is perfect. See, the Indian philosophy dictates that anybody who comes to, to your house, it's not a guest, but he's God. So we treat every 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 guest who comes and comes and stays with us, okay, as close to God as possible. For many general managers, running a hotel like the Taj is the pinnacle of their career. Every city has its own monument to which people very strongly relate to, okay? So this is the place in Bombay which people relate to very, very strongly. Gaurav has been in charge for the last three years. A blink of an eye in a hotel which everyone in Mumbai has grown up with. You know, to a large section of society in Bombay, they've seen this hotel for the last hundred odd years. So their parents have seen this, their grandparents have seen this. A lot of them have got married here, their parents have got married here. They call it the People's Taj. This is unlike any other hotel that I've run before. When you come here, you realize and feel the history of about 110 years. The Taj was the first hotel in India to have electricity and the first to have a licensed bar. Built in 1903, over 40 years before the end of the British Raj, it was a regular retreat for the Indian Maharajas and throughout its history has welcomed VIPs from all over the world. Every client who comes and stays with us is a VIP. Okay. To a large extent, we wouldn't like to distinguish between the real VIPs and the VIPs. But if you really want to have a culture of uh, top-class service being given to every resident guest, you need to treat every one of them as VIPs. Before all major visits, Gaurav holds a meeting with the hotel's heads of department to scrutinize every detail. The position that you had no, chosen for were, them to stand yeah. for Oprah Winfrey's visit as well as for um, President Sarkozy was the correct position. No point in time should we forget that anybody who comes and stays in this hotel is, is paying through his pocket and needs to be treated in that particular manner. Another thing I want is, and I want everybody's opinion on that, do you want somebody playing traditional Indian music? The whole idea is when they walk in, they hear something which is very traditional, Indian, and soft. It's not just the guests who stay in the Tata suite who are given five-star treatment. Hello. It's nice to be back. Karen. Hey, Mr. Sinanan, welcome back. Hello. Dr. Anil Sinanan has been visiting up to five times a year for over a decade. Hello. Welcome to welcome you back. Hello. Hello. Welcome back. Thank you. Wishing you a lot of good luck for speaking to us. Enjoy your stay with us. I always do. <laughs> a lawyer from London. He stays at the hotel whenever he visits the city. My love affair with Mumbai is purely because of Bollywood and I try, I buy every single CD which is released, every DVD and I also go to nondescript stores in really far out places, that's my mission, to buy um, LP records. I go out and I like mingling with what they call the masses, ordinary people. And they look at the Taj in awe, not envy. And because I come, I've traveled globally and from the Caribbean, I find that really strange because often people look at you if you come out of, let's say, the Hilton in Trinidad, and they just say, rich bastard, and they want to beat you up and kidnap you. But in Mumbai, they just see that as like, wow, well done you for being a guest. Because one of the maxims of Indian life, or 
Maybe Hinduism, I don't know. Guess this god. So I'm a guest, so I'm a god. When a guest is booked into the Tata suite, yes. Gaurav checks everything personally before they arrive. I can't shake this habit off. I have to come at the last minute and I have to see personally for myself. I don't know whether it gives me a sense of a bit of control. Uh, also allows me to sleep better. <laughs> I think I'm a natural critique by nature. And the more I intervene in terms of doing repeated rounds, the more seriously everybody else actually takes their job. So, uh, you know, it works that way. This lamp is crooked. I want this to be individual as well as the main sure, lamp. Sure. Both of them are crooked. So just get that addressed. You can do that later on. Huh. Come. As far as the sitting room is concerned, the entire room has been painted and polished. Much before in times, you will not find any fragrance or any kind of smell over there. The room has been completely sanitized, pest controlled and disinfected. I don't want any painter, polisher now coming into the suite from now on. I don't want the smell to change. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. And on that particular day, I just want to feel the flowers smell and nothing else. When is uh, his butler coming? Uh, so half an hour before his arrival, uh, on right. 8th. Okay, what I want you to do is, after the first day, yes, okay, sir. I'm not talking about the 8th night when he comes in, Ninth, try to get in touch with his butler, okay? Your butler team is going to be here. Yes, sir. Please ensure there's a lady in that team. Huh? I've last time spoken about two butlers and a lady in the team. Ask what is his preference as far as the single malt is concerned. Yes, sir. Okay? Yeah. When he comes the first day, he's going to be in the hotel at about 9 o'clock. I don't know whether he's going to ask for dinner. So for us to be able to understand what his requirements are going to be is going to be an issue in the sense. So I have made a booking for him in all my restaurants. All of them? All of them. <laughs> so I really don't want to take a chance. So anything which is expressed during the course of the stay, you know, we really don't want to be in a position to say no. This is India. I mean, we frankly don't say no to anything. If it means that I have to ask somebody to stay back in the hotel because the services may be asked, uh, outside the working hours, we will ensure that we deliver. I mean, otherwise, how do you explain 1,500 people? So. Let's start. Sarvada yoga tu jagana va tu je karni dev va chakana va Upeshun ko kun vantananta Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Of the hotel's 1,500 staff, 200 are room boys. Many have migrated from the villages of their birth to work in Mumbai. They're all coming from a humble background. There are many boys who are not so highly educated. They have just done the schooling. They have not seen or experienced what we are expecting them to deliver. Appreciation of luxury, understanding the finer details, it is what they have been taught every day, morning, evening. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Each morning after prayers, Indrani's exacting standards start with the boys themselves. Huh? Hi, morning. Good morning. Okay, boys. Good morning. First and foremost, is he looking fresh? ready to take on the world, okay? Obviously, he has to smell good in the sense he should smell fresh. Hello, Samul! Hair is not cut. There are times when we are being strict with them, there are times when we are nice with them, there are times we are like elder sister to their problems, to their issues. So it's like a whole family working together towards a common goal. Sharad, come here. Your trouser is very long. Can you wear it on around your waistline? Pull it up, pull it up. And your shoes are also not polished. I, I polish my So many of them with their own little issues. We know each one of them, how their family is, what they are, you know, who their children are, what issues they're having, what family problems they're having. Sometimes we do try to sort this out. So it's like a, it's not just only professional relationship. Turn. 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 I want cut down here, shaved over here. I don't want all this uh, trickling down. Amol. Amol. Haircut. Santosh, haircut. 
Okay, where is your nails? Cut. Okay. All of you wearing black socks? Yes. Who is not? For the fortunate few who get a job at the hotel, it can change the course of their lives. Mr. Chaska has worked here for 42 years. During that time, 16 members of his family have also been employed by the hotel. Private bar service. These days, Mr. Chaska is in charge of the mini bars. Private bar. May I come in? I really enjoy my job very much. I never feel that I'm 61. I feel that I'm 16 because I'm still young, I have maintained. People are asking me how you don't have stomach, how you are not fat. I said, Taj has built me very strongly and that is what the wonderful things people listen to me. Working Taj is the happiness, not only me but my family because this is the super deluxe Pfizer hotel which is number one in all over India. And that is why it's a proud and the pride to me and my family also. It's a, it's a dream come in the truth. Joyable life we are living here. Private bar service. Show the smile. Smile shows that comfortable. Smile shows that understanding. Smile tells that really successful. And smile says that caring. And smile says that, yes, I am very happy. Private bus service. Very good morning, sir. Morning. Very nice to see you. Uh, your newspaper. Yes, please. Uh, and do you require some replenishment <coughs> of the tea coffee? Uh, would, you, would it be possible for you to make me some coffee from the... Yes. From this? Yes, I do that, sir. Thank this, you. Oh, uh, you uh, allow, uh, me, allow me to make your coffee, please. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Do you require a Nescafe, sir? Yes, black coffee. Black coffee. Enjoy your coffee, sir. Have a nice day. Pleasant stay, sir. I suppose I do like being called sir. I don't know. <laughs> but yes, I, I think it's like being treated with um, kindness and respect, um, I hope it, it doesn't go to my head. Or maybe that's why I keep coming back. I've come from a very humble background. Both my parents um, were largely illiterate and um, children of indented immigrants from India to the West Indies. I literally had to get myself to university get a job in London, and I started literally with nothing, so why not enjoy it now? Thank you. I suppose that's why I appreciate it. I suspect if I was born into it, I would have probably taken it for granted. My favorite bit of the hotel is sitting exactly around the poolside. I like the sort of protected environment, the uh, oasis of calm, where you can get away from the hustle and bustle of the urban jungle. Sometimes I close my eyes and I pretend that all of India is like this, that this is the real India. In the real Mumbai, the average person lives in less than five meters of space. Built on a peninsula, the city has nowhere left to expand. But the population has doubled in the last 25 years. Alongside its hundreds of millionaires, more than half the population lives in slums.
Many live and work on the streets outside the hotel. Lalita, Suresh and their family have lived by the hotel for most of their lives. They make money selling strings of jasmine to passers-by. Have you talked to any guests guest the Taj? Yes, there are people who sit and sit. They talk to them. Do you have food? Yes, I am a I came when I was very young. Actually, I came to India about my 20s and uh, 2022. And of course, I was a very leftist woman at that time. And my first husband, uh, we were fiancés at that time. He was coming from a very rich family. Then I used to take him to hippies, palace, uh, hippies places. And he said, OK, half, half. Half the time, we'll go to the hippies' places, and one or two nights, at least, we come to the Taj. And when I came here and I saw that, I said, no, that is for rich people, for bourgeois, I'm not coming. And we stayed there, and I was very happy to stay there. <laughs> I found it gorgeous, fabulous. That was ages ago. The best memory I have here is with the, uh, my second husband, which was the, the greatest love uh, of my life. We used to, to have a great time talking with the people, uh, being in, in, a, in a way like we, we were in a family. There is something about this hotel which is really uh, very particular. You stay there and you, you get back to the history of uh, a, a big part of the history of, of, of India and also a part of history of the world. Sometimes I live with the, with the old people that they have been passed by, the last Shah of Iran, as well as John Lennon, and so many other people. And I, I feel them, I feel the spirit there. Serving the world's elite requires the utmost discretion. When John Lennon and Yoko Ono stayed for five days, no one, not even a cleaner, was allowed in their suite. So you set the suite yesterday? Yes, ma'am. You had a round with Mr. Pokhrian? Yes. Okay. And the key? Yes, ma'am. Well, it's open now. Before the next guest checks into the Tata suite, okay. the head of each department wants to make sure everything in their area is faultless. Let's start with the living room. Maher is in charge of food and beverages. Okay. You've got the pims. Take the band rolls off. No band rolls on any of them, please. Well, I'm not quite liking the shine of this. And if you leave it here, it's going to get more tarnished. So just take this off, polish it, put it back. Martini extra dry. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Gordon's? Gordon's there, ma'am. Yeah. No, no, no Bacardi. Fine. I, absolutely not. Please upgrade. Fine. Captain Morgan, spiced gold. 
Yeah. I come back uh, actually multiple times. This is the uh, probably the third one I'm already making. There's a watermark on this glass. Here. See here? Yes, ma'am. By afternoon, yes. you'll find, uh, you know, that whatever I've already highlighted right now uh, will get addressed. And I will make another round around uh, evening just to make sure it's all corrected. No. Please, fresh piece or get it cleaned. Checks upon checks upon checks. Endless checks till he actually checks in. <laughs> so that's how it is. The Tata Suite comes with 13 staff. Rooms have been dedicated to all the guests' needs. Okay, this is the yes. VIP pressing room. Yes, ma'am. Including one for ironing. Get a couple of laundry baskets placed here. Certainly, ma'am. Ask Mr. Mehel to make a round of this room. Fine, ma'am. Because I don't think this is everything they need. But ask him to still check. Okay, fine. Come. There are many a times that VIPs, uh, VIP movements involve only their own butler coming into contact with the VIP. And our butlers only become further butlers to their butler. So, so it can be a butler to a butler to a butler. <laughs> you could end up with four butlers in the room and also you could end up with three butlers that have very little to do because their butler is already taking care of most of the preferences. But we go with that. Little bit to the left, out away from you. Yes, glass also. Both glass and bottle. Okay. The philosophy of the hotel is the same as the philosophy of the country. Fourth one again, little bit away from you. Guest is God in India. And, uh, you know, we, we live and breathe that philosophy. You have no provision to actually lay an extra chair. No, so what I want you to do is pull it here. Till here. Okay. Okay, so that if I have to add an extra chair in emergency and keep an extra chair somewhere here. Sure. Okay. The way the suite is originally in Drani needs to be turned around very, very quickly after the morning meeting. Yes, sir. Okay, I will not have time to come back again to have a look at this. Sure. Done. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. For us, everything we do is keeping in mind that guest is God when he walks in. And uh, whatever we do is centered around that idea. Please realize all these people have stayed in the best hotels in the world. Okay. There are certain things they take for granted and there are certain things that they really like to be surprised with. The ability of a hotel to surprise on those small, finer aspects of luxury is what is going to set you apart from other luxury hotels. You know, I'm slightly restless by nature, hence my management style is also dictated by that. I'm a bit aggressive at work in the sense when I want to do something, I want to do it then and there. If you're extremely passionate about what you're doing, a certain sense of that tends to get also rubbed on to people who work with you. Plus, they also understand that there is always somebody who's keeping an eye and there is always somebody who's really concerned about how the hotel's faring. And sometimes over a period of time, people understand that the final solution in a hotel tends to lie with the general manager, which is rather unfortunate because, um, you know, for every solution, people actually look up to the general manager for the final solution, okay? So, once you get engaged so heavily with something like this, the sense of responsibility actually changes from just being responsible for your job suddenly realize that you're also responsible for 1,500 people. For its most exclusive guests, the hotel rolls out the red carpet. So right now, the, this part which is not late will be just done 10 minutes before the arrival so that because a lot of people who are stepping onto it, we don't want it to be spoiled. So we have put cotton stands. But I personally love this look from him, no? red and the orange things. And this will be maintained till the day he checks out. How are you going to feed people off of the carpet? 
you saw me doing this now. <laughs> Personally escorting and telling them this is not the way, the other way is the official route. But we had been doing this for lot many times, so we are well practiced. Despite reserving a place in each of their eight restaurants, the hotel still doesn't know what the guest is doing about dinner. Chef Oberoi is the hotel's grand executive chef. He spent 40 years cooking for presidents, kings and celebrities. <laughs> chef Oberoi is hoping tonight's guest will want an authentic Indian dining experience. We don't know what they will have. It should be Indian. I think that's what uh, we expect them to eat, the first meal in the country. And uh, especially in this city, that's where we got the Mumbai tiffin ready. And uh, a person, when he orders a tiffin, he gets the flavors of Mumbai. For high profile guests, the hotel often arranges for a musician to play the traditional Indian instrument, the Jal Tarang a set of bowls tuned with water. Okay, so this is how the magic begins. Why has this been chosen as the music? Oh, you know, it's very, very typical of the city. So we want to get the, give the VIP an absolute, uh, you know, sit, uh, welcome to the city and give him a slight flavor of Mumbai. He's testing it now. Gaurav was a bit concerned about what the musician would be wearing. I've got it. He told me that he should be wearing an Indian kurta. The colour should be matching the colour of the sari which is being worn by the front office GREs. So I managed to get it. Yeah, easy. 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 How did it go? Very well. <laughs> As anticipated, he was uh, very interested in uh, understanding what Jal Tarang was all about. So, just told him what it was all about and why it is so. Uh, why is it done in India? Because you know it tends to send out positive vibes and energy and things like that. So, that's Relief? how. Relief? Really? No, there's always another day, another challenge. So. <laughs> With eight restaurants in the hotel on standby, the Tata Suite guest decided to eat in his room. As soon as a guest checks out, Indrani's team begins again preparing the Tata suite for the next arrival. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. We have uh, gathered over here. We'll start from 6.49, basically. Govind, you'll be with the vacuum cleaner, and you can start doing the vacuuming. And extra furniture, which is there, like mirror is there. I'll be just telling you these, these furniture. Just start removing them and start keeping them in the lift planning area. So let's start. Here we have a guest who is paying almost as much as their uh, salary, maybe per day. So obviously there's a difference, uh, but that will be in any kind of hoteling industry. The difference will always stay about whom they are servicing and how they are. People who have spent more years have become more, they feel more attached to this place. It's like, it's like their home, you know. Room boy Harshad has cleaned the bath in the Tata suite for the last two years. Their life is very high, high, high profile life. You know, their all means they are very rich people. Harsh, they are all VIPs. They are very proud people. They are proud to be there. And because they are such big people, they are not just doing their work. Yes, they are lucky. I can say that. 
The boys at the Taj are relatively well paid, and Harshad earns more than three times the average income in India. My family is my wife. ऐसे बाथटब में आपने कभी भी अपने लाइफ में बात लिया नहीं नहीं अभी तक नहीं नहीं अगर आपको कभी मौका लगा इस बाथ में बैठने का तो आप किस तरफ बैठेंगे आपको कौन सा भी अच्छा लगेगा ये मैं वहाँ से वहाँ से क्योंकि वहाँ से पूरा समंदर देखिएगा ना भी अच्छा वहाँ से ना इसलिए पूरा गेटवे और आरबीएन से पूरा देखिएगा ना इसलिए For a select few, a short stay in the hotel is not enough. Maria Moores is one of three resident guests, an American oil heiress with a property in Rome. She likes to escape the European winter. You live here, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah. In the winter, in the summer in Greece, I'm very lucky. So how long are you here, Maria? I'm here this time for six months. I've done two. It gets a little, time drags here. But I don't have many friends. Do you mind me asking how old you are? I'm in my 80s. What does that mean exactly? 83. 83. Exactly. And uh, before I used to lie about my age, now it's a sort of triumph to have made it this far. <laughs> When you look in the mirror these days, what do you what do you think? Sometimes I think, oh, that's not bad, and other times I think, oh my God. <laughs> Especially when the, when the hair starts to grow out and you realize I'm not this smashing blonde after all. I've known older people, old people, in fact, that after 50, they just sort of slump into an easy chair and stay there, you know. And uh, I've never been happy with that. You want some more adventures? Well, yes, of course. That's the whole point of staying alive, you know. I need, um, I need this. In her 20s, Maria married an Italian opera singer. They had three children, but later divorced. I was with a Greek man for many years, and then unfortunately, he prematurely dropped dead. But he saved himself nothing. He'd done everything. Liquor, drugs, but he was great fun. You had a good time. I had a good time with him, yes. And uh, How long ago was that? Oh, let's see. Must be now, eight years ago. Eight years ago? Yes, eight or nine years ago. So you were in your 70s? Yeah. A love well, affair he, in your 70s? Of course, why not? <laughs> if they don't mind, and they didn't seem to. And uh, he did say, you know, Maria, I'd like to marry you, if you weren't so old. <laughs> and how old was he? He was much younger. He died at 44, prematurely, because he saved himself nothing. You, 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 you caught a man who was 30 years younger than you. Actually, he caught me, picked me up in church. It was Easter, and I love the Greek Easter. So... How long were you together? We were together almost 11 years. 
It was obviously an important relationship. For you. Yeah, it was, it was. And um, I was shattered when he died. Tasked with making the hotel a home for guests is the team of 35 butlers. In weekly role-playing sessions, they're schooled in the correct ways to serve. What we are doing today, we are doing an in-room dining training. We'll do a mock audit. In the sense, uh, one of you or two of you will be coming with the trolley with this, with this order and will be delivering it to the guest. Try to make him comfortable, talking to him. Try to understand the guest requirements or his preferences and then ask questions accordingly. So be confident and don't forget that you have to smile a lot. Everybody is very tense at this moment. So don't be tense, smile. Oh yeah, please come, come in. How are you, Prakash? Good, good. So how was the meeting which you attended today? Oh, it was lovely. Thank you very much for asking. All right. Yes. So would like to taste the wine? Perfect, yes. yes It's a lovely wine. Thank you. Okay. So you can just leave it on the, uh, on, the, on, the, on the table itself. Thank you. In the 2,000 pounds a night Neptune suite, Melville, the butler manager, is welcoming back one of his most regular guests, Captain Basin. I mean, I've been here in this particular department uh, past three years. I've been always taking care of him. The relationship is actually very, very special because uh, he actually calls me for every single request, whatever he has. Uh, he'll always pick up the phone and say, tell Melville to call me in my room or tell Melville to come to my room. I would like to give him something. The captain has been coming to the hotel for 50 years. I'm an oil trader and I travel practically all over the world. The Americas, Europe, UK, the Far East, the China, Korea, Singapore, Thailand, Australia, India, Bangladesh uh, sometimes, South Africa, East Africa. I've been staying here for a very, very long time and I enjoy, it's like home. For me, it's like home. I've got all the facilities that I look for in a suite. They make sure that you are as comfortable as you can be. Nothing, no tarnished. Plate should be clean. The butlers are preparing for one of his regular dinner parties, which will be attended by a number of Mumbai's millionaires. It's basically 12 to 15 people at, at the max that usually comes and he's staying in one of a very beautiful suite that overlooks the ocean that has the space and the capacity to accommodate that many amount of guests. He's lived in luxury for many years of his life. He knows standards, he knows everything. If you're going to be putting a glass on his table, it has to go with a cocktail napkin and a coaster, a stutter stick, if it's a mixed drink. Uh, so on and so forth. So there's everything that's important with regards to the details Captain Basin looks into. Captain just mentioned to me in the lounge earlier that he's going to be having a special blend of his nuts which he gets from uh, the Gulf. He's going to give it to us and we need to place it around the room uh, so that it's going to be very convenient for people as and when they drink. Uh, there will be, uh, you know, they can just uh, stretch out their hands and uh, grab on some nuts. These are important guests for him. He just earlier also mentioned that to me. So we have to floor the guests. We have to make Captain Basim look really, really good in front of his guests, okay? Everything that the last final detail should be nicely planned, okay? Stir sticks, coasters, cocktail napkins, lime juice, sugar syrup, salt, everything. None of his guests should be having to wait for more than two minutes for a drink. I uh, bring with me 
various kinds of nuts that we get in Dubai. It's a very special shop which does nuts in different flavors. They are in hermetically sealed bags, uh, very fresh, and they are open when the guests are here. And they put in little serving bowls around here. How are you? Lovely to see you. Good to see you. Chetan Bhai. Nice to see you. How are you? You lost a lot of weight. Bela is rishte mein hamari nis lagti hai, lekin... Last week when I had this friends of mine, one lady pointed out to the other lady who was here, I didn't hear it, that these nuts are not good. And she called Melville the butler, and he was told that, you know, these nuts are bad. You know, you should taste them and try them before you serve to the guests, because if it happens next time, we're going to report to the hotel management. He profusely apologized that I'm very sorry, ma'am. It will not, never happen again. Uh, we will make sure that next time the nuts served are fresh nuts. But she didn't know that these were my nuts. <laughs> <laughs> On that evening, he saved, he saved me. I mean, uh, he could have said, sorry ma'am, these are not my nuts. The uh, sir has brought this and so it would have been a very embarrassing situation. Fresh as it is. Anoop, Sunil, Alka, Rishi, Anisha, Jyoti. Mr. Chaska has been striving to please guests at the hotel his entire working life. I have about 200 odd people who've done more than 35 years of service, active service. I mean, some of them have worked here for as long as, uh, as close to what my age is. Anybody who's worked in this hotel for 10 years plus actually uh, is extremely uh, thankful of the fact that he's got a job with the Taj. It's difficult for people who worked here for a very long time because they know no other way of living, actually. I think this hotel has been everything to them. I mean, they've got married here, they've had their children, their children have gone ahead and got a job and made a career for themselves in their lives, and fathers have continued working in this hotel. So let's uh, check the grooming. Michelle, you have to just from down. Just one more time, press it. Yes, sir. And your shoes, those to be polished again. I think there's, uh, yeah, the polish is coming out. So just polish the toes yes. and the uh, and the sides. Okay. Right? Yes. The Chaska, always perfectly groomed. Thank you, sir. You should take the example of Mr. Chaska on the grooming standards. Perfect. Your shoes uh, can be more shiny. Sure, sir. You can. I will do this. Fine. Sure, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. In a few months, Mr. Chaska will be retiring, 42 years after first seeing an advert for a job at the hotel. There was an ad in the newspaper. I just uh, sent application and I got the call later from the Indian Hotels Company Limited on dated 5th July 1972. 
and I had an interview. You kept that for 40 years? Yes, madam. Around about 42 years of pass. This letter has been given by management. You are appointed in the stewarding department. I was so happy and entire my family, my village, I was so happy that one of our students from the high school has got a topmost, highest, the Taj Mahal Hotel Palace Mumbai, a job in that Taj Mahal Hotel in Mumbai. And my entire relatives was so happy. And this is the certificate of service of 35 years. The long service award was given by our boss, this certificate I got from them, so 35 years of service. But now you've done 42 and you're about to retire, yes. looking after the guests. Yes, yes. And that, that is a very big uh, history for me because it's in a live, it's a live experience. Each and every guest comes to my, comes in my dream. Who is Mr. Dalal? Who is Mr. Mehta? Who is, who is Madam Lee? So all the guests are, yeah, they are good related to me, like my family, because I spend my more of the hours in Taj Mahal Hotel than my family. So I'm very closer to my company, closer to my hotel, that which I'm related, like blood relation. You can miss the talk. I will miss a lot. Yes. The tears are here in my heart. Today, across India, Hindus are celebrating the festival of Diwali. All of you are welcome to my house. Wish you a happy Diwali. Wish you a happy Diwali. Of course, my family is welcoming you at the main gate of my building. Will you please come follow me? Thank you very much, please. Careful, yes. Mr. Chaska lives two hours away from the hotel with his wife, son and daughter-in-law. You're welcome, welcome, welcome to my house. This is my wife, who always, who always cook the food very delicious. Okay, I'm very happy with my family. They never trouble me. And they also know, at this age also, I'm working hard at my place, but I never show my tiredness to my family at all. I always go smiling to the work. I always come smiling with my family. And that is why I keep increasing their happiness and they also do the same at the same time. Typically, businessmen and uh, you know even households and families would do a Lakshmi Puja to invite Goddess Lakshmi to their homes to bring in success, prosperity, wealth, etc. At the hotel, we do this every year. Same room, same time. Because it's something everyone feels very connected to. And uh, what I just did was actually bring our sales books across. Uh, we do this every year. We print a new set of books for Diwali. The priest will come in shortly and the puja will happen. After that, he will bless my books. So it's so to speak that after invoking the goddess, he brings her blessings and he bestows them on my books. And that will bring me great sales. So that's pretty much what it is all about. Namaskaran, 
20 to 25 percent of my time actually spent on ensuring that certain traditions which are part of this hotel are carried on with the same amount of spirit that they were handled with in the past. A lot of functions which we do for employees every year as a matter of tradition, sometimes you don't even know why they are done. You know, there have been functions where I've tried to find out why do we do a certain thing in a certain manner and I've not been able to get a clear answer. But today I think it's more important to carry on doing these as long as they, they provide a lot of benefit to the employees. I think these are certain traditions that we need to keep intact as part of this hotel, okay, in order to differentiate this hotel from any other hotel in the country. It is changing and it's going to change more and more because people are not going to spend 40 years of their productive life working in hotels or for a single hotel. So that's changing. You will get to hear comments and remarks in the hotel, but you know, there used to be people who used to know me. The expectation of clients in terms of them being recognized and them, them being pampered the way it used to happen in the past is also going to change. I think the kind of luxury which people in India expected of five-star hotels in the past is no longer going to be there in the future. You're not going to come back and you're not going to see 50 employees who recognized you for the last 30 years to be around. That's not going to happen.